you are already blessing us. You are already blessing us, and we are grateful to you. We are grateful to you, and we say continue, Lord, continue your good works in our lives. Continue your blessings. Lift us up unto higher realms of glory, higher realms of blessings, Lord, that we will bring glory to the name of our Lord Jesus, that we will draw multitudes into the kingdom of our Lord Jesus. Do it. Holy Spirit, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. In thy, in thy mercy, do it. Do it. Do it in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 In the book of Psalm 30 and verse number 5, the Bible says, For his anger endures forever. Uh, for his anger endured but a moment. In his favor is life. In his favor is life. And then verse 7 says, Lord, by thy favor, Thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. By thy favor, thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. And I want, precious one, I want you to understand this and, and understand it very well spiritually. That the favor of God is the antidote, is the remedy to all misfortunes in man's life. The favor of God is the remedy to all the problems in a man's life it doesn't matter how deep a man has gone into any problem how messy things have become all it takes is god's favor to show up once god's favor shows up the good thing about god's favor is that it doesn't just change your story it erases all the negative things so that when people see you, you don't look like somebody who has suffered that thing before. You don't look like somebody who had tasted poverty before. You don't look like somebody who has been sick before. You don't look like somebody who has been homeless before. Because the favor of God erases the trace of all Satan. And all people see around you is the glory of God. The glory, the glory, the glory, the glory. And so we must be very conscious about God's favor. Very, very conscious about God's favor. When we talk about the help of God, David says, send us help from above, O oh God. One of the ways God helps man is to favor, to release his favor upon the man. We know the story of the children of Israel when God was bringing them out of Egypt. And of course, they own nothing, even though they labored all these you know, centuries and they had nothing. That is one proof of bondage. When you are in bondage, one of the proof of bondage is that you work and work and work, but there is nothing to show for it. That means you are in bondage. Do you understand? That is what was happening to the children of Israel when they were in Egypt. They were working and building Egypt and doing everywhere, but they had nothing. So when God now decided to deliver them, when God was bringing them out of the bondage, God said, I will give you favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And when the favor of God came, it's as if all the work they have done hundreds of years were paid to them in a day. You, you understand? Because favor is working here now. The children of Egypt gave all their treasury to them. They did something that is as if they, their brains have gone to sleep. You know, the people they did, I mean, Yesterday they hated them and today they love them so much that they were releasing all their treasure, all their whatever to them because favor is speaking. So that means by divine favor, something that, that, that you have been denied for years in a day can be released into your life by the force of divine favor. We know the story of Mephibosheth, that, that, that beggar sitting by the roadside who was begging and had no hope. And then all of a sudden, he was sitting there and the, a messenger comes and says, the king wants to see you. He goes to the palace, the beautiful palace, and King David looks at him and says, from today, you are part of my family. And Right there, the Bible says, the lands, the property, the money, the bank account, everything that belonged to 
to his grandfather King uh, Saul was given to him. Say favor. Amen. Somebody that a moment ago he was sitting on the roadside begging, and he been doing that for years. And just like that, by divine favor, he now owned properties. And he had servants, people that were at, at his beck and call, because favor had come upon him. May that be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Very important. So that you see, when you understand this thing, you don't sit down and think of how I'm going to get out of this mess, how I'm going to turn these things around. What you are going to have to do is to step in what it takes to provoke God's favor. Because one favor begins to speak, everything will turn around as if you never suffered it. Favor. And that is why whatever situation that you are in now, uh, I mean, adverse situation, it's, it's not even relevant. Don't give attention to it. Focus on how to provoke God's favor. How to provoke God's favor. How to provoke God's favor. Don't joke with divine favor. This year 2024, don't joke with divine favor. Some of us have gotten ourselves into all kinds of situations. Some of us are in the valley of death. There is no way out. What kind of work are you going to be doing to come out of this death? You are paying and every month interest is piling. How do you get out of it? You understand? But by divine favor, you will wake up one morning and you owe nobody anything. Yeah. By favor. By favor. There are things in our heart to do. But then, physically speaking, you can figure out how to even begin to do it. You don't even know how where to start from. You don't know who to meet. You don't know who to talk to. Even if you know the people to meet, you don't even have access to them. And so it, the devil capitalizes on that and disturbs you and makes you worry and heavy because it seems like there is no way out. But remember, you are a child of the most high God. You belong to him. He bought you with his blood. He poured his life down for you. And the Bible says, if he will give you Jesus Christ, what else will he withhold from you? And so, in the midst of that, you have to understand that this messy situation is what qualifies me to be a candidate of divine miracle. But what does it take? Favor. Favor. Oh Lord God of mercy, look upon me with mercy. Look upon me with mercy. The reason why favor is important is because in most cases, the things we do, the things we say, our disobedience and sometimes the, the wrong things we do give access to the enemy to bring all those messy things in our life. And so if God is waiting for us all the time to be right, he will do nothing for us. This is where favor comes in. 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 And so we must settle it in our spirit that no matter the situation I have, I found myself in, no matter what is challenging my life, my Lord will never allow disgrace and reproach to be my portion. He will answer me with favor. He will show me favor because the Bible says, by thy favor, you make my mountain to stand strong. You make my mountain to stand strong. Weeping may endure for a night, but in thy favor is life. That means when God's favor comes, every mercy things come to life. The children of Israel never believed that any power could deliver them from the hands of Pharaoh. If you understand Bible history, at that time Pharaoh was like a god. Pharaoh was like America, like America today. Nobody messes with Egypt and Pharaoh. Nobody delivers out of the hands of Pharaoh. No army could stand the army of Egypt at that time. So who will deliver this people? 
Jehovah, the Almighty, Elohim, came to Moses. He said, their cry has come to me, and I have come down to deliver. I have come down to deliver. And he came down and did, all, we know the story, he did all kinds of wonders. And then he said, but wait a minute, I'm not going to let you go out like that. You have labored in this country for too long. You have worked and you deserve your reward. So I will give you favor in their sight. <laughs> Do you know the favor of God or you can make your enemies behave like fools? I will give you favor in their sight. So that when you go, you will not go empty. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. I decree over your life that this year you will not be empty. Amen. I said this year you will not be empty. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. By divine favor, you will be loaded in Jesus' mighty name. So that you will not go empty. And then he released the favor upon them. And we know the story. What happened? Very, very important. David was on the field with his sheep. No wonder David understood the favor of God more than everyone. He was on the field with the sheep, having a good time, and they called him. A messenger comes and says, your dad wants to see you. My dad, it's not time for me to come home. When I come out with the sheep, it takes about a week or two. He said, well, uh, he said I should come and call you. And um, I don't know what is going on, but that great prophet is in your house. David, you meet Prophet Samuel in our house. Prophet Samuel don't go to you. He's only in the palace, where the king sits. He said, well, uh, what you don't know is that you are the king. He want to see you. He will be the The moment he entered, the prophet said, you know that, son, you know that. Today, God anoints you king over his people, Israel. And the Bible says, and the Spirit of God came upon David from that day forward. Something he never prayed for. Favor was just released on him. Favor, the poor boy in the field with the sheep. Instantly, one moment he was a poor shepherd. The next moment he is anointed the king of Israel. The entire land of Israel is given to him. In other words, he's the wealthiest man now. By favor. There are some things you cannot work your way into it. It has to be by God's favor. Mary was minding her business. And then it appeared, oh, thou that is honored and favored among women. She never prayed for that. Favor. God just look upon her and release the favor so she was chosen among women it does not mean she was the only virgin there were many virgins in those days uh, um, if you met thousand women in those days 999.9 are virgins today is opposite you understand so she wasn't the only virgin but Favor came upon her. And that which has never been heard of, that which cannot be imagined, that which no mouth can speak, happened to her. When the angel spoke, he said, Wait, angel, <laughs> in case you don't know biology, <laughs> I don't have any money in my life. So, what you are saying, how is it possible? The angel said, Don't worry. <laughs> what I'm talking about is not according to the natural process. The Holy Ghost will come on you. The Holy Ghost. You see, the problem with many believers is that everything that we say we are praying to God, we are expecting God for, but our mind is focused on the natural process. Forgotten that God is not subject to any human laws or regulation. You understand? You need a breakthrough. You need a promotion. And then you yourself have convinced yourself why you, you don't have to have it. Oh, okay. Uh, the three people with me, they, they have master's degree. I finished some college. 
uh, with some funny diploma. So yeah, there's no way I can. You understand? That's you. Do you know who you are? You understand? You you start a business and you need uh, fifty million to take off because it's a big business. And then, as you are going for it, uh, he say the devil can see you. We can't get it. You see, your credit, this thing is not even good. And your monthly salary, you see, then you know they, they check your income first, and then your credit, and then you know, I mean, yeah, we have bankers in this room, they know what I'm talking about. You understand? If you walk into this office and you say you want a loan, the way she will scrutinize you. <laughs> you understand? And so you sit down and you yourself will there's no way I'm getting it. He said the Holy Ghost. Yes, you are right. Naturally, you don't have to because you don't have a man. It takes a man and a woman to produce a baby. But listen, man, what I'm telling you, it is by God Himself. The Holy Ghost will come upon you, and the impossible will become possible. You will take a seed. Because God has favored you. Lifted. I am lifted, I am lifted by your word Out of shame and sorrow Unto the glorious realms above I could hear Mary singing and dancing But she forgot that fever was breaking a problem As she was dancing Boom! The sea is there Joseph said Mary What? You of all people Mary, I thought you were the most holiest woman, so you were cheating on me all this while. How does she defend herself? The proof is there. That is why you don't jump into conclusions at once. <laughs> the, yes, it is true. She is pregnant. And it is true. A man and a woman should come together. But it is not true that she slept with any man. How do you explain this? So God himself has to come to Joseph. He took God himself. Because this one is the hand of God. So God, you must defend this thing. I did not pray for it. I was enjoying my life. And you just appeared and said, well, favor and honor. And look at what the favor has brought to me. I'm about to lose the man I love. Because the Lord, God goes to Joseph and goes. You understand? But what I'm saying here is that I perceive strongly that God's favor is going to do some things in your life that you can't, you, you can't even believe that it will happen. Right now, you can't even believe it. You can't believe it. But like Mary, the Holy Ghost will come. The hand of God is coming upon you with that favor and that which looks so impossible is going to become possible amen, amen. glory be to our lord jesus glory be to our lord jesus a lady called me and she told me she was getting married pastor i'm going to get married and uh, my husband now wants us to pray you know how she is I said, wait, you, you say you are getting what? You mean married? You and a man is getting married. He said, yes, Pastor. All I could say is hallelujah. And I said to myself, look at that. Somebody is in a 30, 40, 50, and the devil made them believe oh, it's over. It's somebody about to hit 70 and he's going to have a wedding. And they wanted me to come and officiate it. You understand? The man is mid 70 something. I was even telling my wife, I said, what, what are they for doing? What are they looking for in this? <laughs> but the point, <coughs> excuse me, the point I'm trying to make here is that do not ever in your life close the chapter on you on any issue because our god is a miracle 
working God. Amen. Amen. When it gets to a point where it seems impossible, favor will show up from the throne of God. But let me quickly bring this as I end uh, this thing. There is something that we do that, that really, really, really touches the heart of God that makes him release favor. You know, and this is, we all know the purpose why Jesus came to die, right? The only reason Jesus died was for the souls of men. The souls of men. The souls of men. That is the only reason why Jesus came to die. I have said it many times. Jesus did not die for miracles. Miracle, he was performing miracles before he died. He was raising the dead. He did not die for financial prosperity. He was prospering many people. Abraham was blessed, David was blessed, Solomon was blessed, and all this time Jesus had not died. So, he did all kinds of things, but there was one thing that could not happen until he went to the cross, and that was the salvation of the soul of man. And so the primary purpose for which Jesus died was for the souls of man. The heartbeat of God is the souls of men. Therefore, anybody that does anything to contribute to the souls of men, <laughs> favor becomes your body body. Anyone. The problem is that I don't know whether it is stubbornness or we think it's not unnecessary. That we can be in the church for years and yet we never sit down and program how to win souls for Christ. And in the book of John, John chapter 4, John chapter 4 and verse number 36, he said, He that reapeth receiveth wages and gather fruit unto eternal life. One of the wages is called divine favor. Not he that prayers and fast, he that repents so. So your prayer and fast uh, and fasting must generate the power, the anointing, the wisdom to win souls. But the problem is that soul winning is not in the equation of our daily activities. Many people that go to church don't even think about it. We have been in church for years and we can't stand before God with one soul and say, Father, I brought this soul. Not one. And yet we are asking God for everything. And the heartbeat of God is not our concern. A great man of God, Bishop Wendipo said, if what matters to God matters to you, favor becomes the order of your day, your life. If what matters to God, and what matters to God is the souls of men. Everything, I have said it many times, everything Jesus, our Lord, is blessing us with. The money, the houses, the cars, the company, family, everything is geared towards one thing. So we need everything. All that Jesus is doing for us, if it does not come in, in winning souls, then it is wasted. The Bible says, what shall it profit a man if he should get the whole world and lose his soul? So think about it. What shall it profit God if he blesses us with all the blessings and people go to hell? You understand? So all the blessings, the reason why God is keeping us healthy, the reason why he's blessed us with long life, the reason why he has released his angels to protect us from every satanic thing is because he needs you and I here to use us to win souls. But unfortunately, this is not the target of many believers. This is not our mind. He that, he that reaped, received wages. He that reaped, received wages. And the Bible says in the book of Daniel chapter 12 and verse number 3, And they that be wise, uh, um, wait, let me, no, let me read this first. Proverbs 11 and verse number 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, 
And he that winneth so is wise. This is God talking. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth so is wise. So that fruit, that fruit of so winning, he that winneth so is what? Wise. And what? How does the Bible describe the wise? And they, and, and Daniel 12, 3, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the feminine, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Did you hear that? He that will the soul is wise, and they that be wise, they will shine as the brightness of the feminine. And they that turn many to righteous, in other words, they that bring many to Christ, will be stars forever and ever. Now, so, think about it. When you dedicate yourself to so winning, do you know the protection, the power, the anointing, the angels, the favor, that is, you don't have to pray for it. The problem, the reason why, is many people find it hard to encounter the Spirit of God is because God's agenda is not important to us. The soul of man, we love money more than the soul of man. We love breakthroughs more than the souls of men. We, like good, we love good lives more than the souls of men. We love material things more than the source of men. So our quest for material things is what has motivated our prayer, our fasting, even our church going, our giving, and all those things. is motivated by our quest for all these material things. But the point is that we are not saying these material things are bad. They are not wrong. It's a blessing from the Lord. But the point is that if we do not love the reason why Jesus died, then we are missing the mark. Let me tell you something. You can come to church and sing and dance and do everything. It means nothing to God if you are not willing to for Him. It means nothing to Him. Your praises come to Him as a sweet smelling savor when you bring souls to Him and lift up your voice, blessing you. Yet, it is one thing we never sit down and think. Sitting down, the word has come to you, you go home, you sit down, you ask God for wisdom, you are strategizing, you are, I mean, you, 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 you are determined. A great man of God that is going to be with the Lord, blessing in the whole sack. When he was telling his story, don't this one he got born again. And this young man went to church. And the pastor was preaching. And the pastor talked about how a believer had the power to raise the dead. And in doing so, bringing souls to Christ. This guy was just an ordinary church member. He said when the pastor said it, he, he closed from church. He did not even go home. He started moving from community to community, looking for where somebody has died. Can you imagine that? You see, we have people that they are God crazy people. We have those to no matter what you preach, you just go home and eat your spaghetti and sleep. And there are those to the way come, they receive the way, and their soul is, their spirit is stand up, that they want to prove the way. He started moving around, moving around until finally he came to a, a house where people were crying because a young girl had died. He walked in there. Can I pray for her? And they, they were even mocking her. She's dead already. He did not say she's sick. She's dead. He said, I know, but can I pray for her? She goes into the room. Here lies the dead girl. He said, you, you see, he was a smart guy. He did not fail to put that thing on himself. He said, Father, your servant said to be. <laughs> so, in case it doesn't happen, that means your servant told the lie. He said it and he read, read it from the word. Just like the king Fred was asking us to do. You understand? He read it that you have given us the authority to read the dead. If what the pastor said is true, Father, here is a dead one. This one is, fre this one is so freshly dead. This one is a fresh one. 
Therefore, according to your word that your servant preached, in the name of Jesus, let life come back to you again and the guests need. The entire community followed him to church the following day. May God forgive us and help us. You understand? That there is it the zeal and the seriousness towards that which God wants is not there. We are only serious about what we want God to do for us. And even what we want God to do, do you know why God will do it? It's because of the souls of men. That is why God is blessing us financially. God is releasing tens of millions of dollars into our life. He's blessing us with good health, long life. We are strong, we are healthy, and all those things. You go to hospitals and you see how sicknesses is destroying people. And you are bouncing around like a rock. Why do you think God is doing that? Because there are many people out there whose salvation is connected to your obedience to God. There are many people out there whose salvation is connected to your financial breakthrough. There are many people out there whose destiny and financial glory and salvation is connected to Christ's business center. That is why God is blessing us. He is why He's blessing us financially. He's giving us angels, protecting us, doing everything. So that his servant is moving to do the seminar. You release the funds for it. We are on the move for Christ. We are not the people that want to satisfy ourselves before we bring the surplus. No, no, no. When we do that, with what heart do we have the boldness to stand before God and say, Father, bless me? How do we do that? But if we will love God and love the reason why he died, the souls of men, and we dedicate ourselves to it. You become one of those that God said before you open your mouth. I've answered. Because God knows everything He brings into your life will bring a soul to Him. Everything. Yes, the devil don't like those people. You are that. But do you know the forces of angels that stand with you? Any devil that will show his head up is a big problem. Because your kind is not common. You have made yourself so relevant to the cause of God on earth. You, you matter to God's agenda on earth. And so God doesn't go with you. It is so important. We should become believers that serve the Lord. As we are serving Him, all the material things will start speaking. Favor will be released. You will be sure that as you are serving God, God will move on people that are building and they will be giving you houses free. They will be giving you cars free. And God opens the door. Money is flowing to you. Very important. I read a testimony about a brother and a wife in Europe that had a business and they first they prayed, they first they prayed, nothing was working. They took loan, the loan became a burden. The loan, the money is gone and they couldn't make a dime out of it. And these loans were in millions. And one day the man was crying to God. And God said, if the vision I have given to myself and to your pastor becomes your focus, I will take care of your business. And that was it. I read it myself in the magazine. When God said that, he told the wife, we are behaving foolishly. Pastor has been announcing and we are doing this. We are going to, we don't give attention to it. All our focus is on our business. This is what God told me. He and the wife went to the pastor and said, Pastor, now we are ready. We are ready. We are ready. And then when they now began to serve God according to the vision God has given to their pastor, all of a sudden, now, long story short, they decided that all the, the business every year, all the money that God will bless them through the business, 50% goes into the work of God. The vision that the pastor carries and the way he did. As at the time I was reading the magazine, he said now they travel around the world in their own debt with the pastor and they move from country to countries, winning shows, running seminars, 
train. He said, by the time we come back, the money that is sitting in our account, I sometimes ask God, where did it come from? Where did it come from? And then it reminded me of what God said, man said. When he said, God cannot be any more committed to you than you are to him. Your commitment to God's agenda is what brings you to greatness. But the devil tries to use the challenges in our life to take us off the, the course of God. So that we are focusing our, on ourselves and it makes you look like you are wise. So yeah, be smart. Focus on yourself. Think about your problem. Solve your problem. When you remember the scripture that came from read earlier on, cast your cares on me for I care for you. And you are saying, Jesus, this care, you can't handle it. You let me, let me care for myself and then after I'm done, I will come. He said, okay, go ahead. <laughs> May God have mercy on us. May God help us. He will help us. Let's just, let's just have a change of mind. He will help us. Let's just receive grace. Let's be determined to be committed. You understand? Don't, don't let the whole man pass without bringing the soul to Christ. Don't, don't let it. Don't make any devil make you think you can't win the soul. No. It's because you haven't made up your mind. That's why the devil makes you think like that. But just make up your mind. Determine and see how God will work with you. You see, what another good thing about soul winning is that anybody that dedicates his or her life to winning souls, you don't know how much God's hand comes upon you. You don't know how much God works with you. You don't know anoint, even when you are sleeping, God's anointing is coming to you. Because you have dedicated your life to doing that which Jesus died for, the souls of men. And as we are doing it, God knows we need money to do it. God knows we need the car. God knows we need the house. God knows we have to pay our children's school fees. God knows he has to protect our children. God knows he has to establish them. So God, all these things, that is why Jesus said, don't think about them. Just mind the kingdom. And these things, I will be adding them. He is not a man that he should have. Let's receive grace to do it. Let's, let us become that people. That is what Christ Business Center stands for. Let's become that kind of believers. That we so love the Lord, that when we see unbelievers, we can't sleep. When we see the devil messing people up, we can't sleep because we love the Lord. And these are God's precious creation. These are the image and the likeness of God. We don't go out and condemn them. We go and show the love of Christ. They are doing what they are doing because we have not brought the light of God to them and the devil is having his way. That is why they are doing that. So don't go and don't focus on what they are doing. Focus on the soul that Jesus died for. The soul. The soul. And let's receive grace. Let's sit down. Let's strategize. Father, give me an idea how to reach souls. Empower me. Give me the boldness. Give me the means, the soul. How do I do it? Do I organize a party and invite people? Do I go out? Do I visit this person? I mean, just while the desire is there, the grace will be released. Amen. Amen. It's very important. How unfortunate that today people flock to church and they don't care about it. There are people in church that are even driving people away. You understand? Last week, you took hundred dollars from me. You said you give me this and this, and then you came this and this. Me, my friend, why is your man in the jail? Message is going on, and he's pinching me. You, you have my number, and message is going on. The hundred is so important to him that he is distracting the person from receiving God's word. And at the end of the service, if the person did not bring the hundred, the whole church will hear it. <laughs> So do you think the following week if the person doesn't have the hundred, he will come? And yet, this person is the best dancer in the church. He, da he dances more than everyone. May God help us. You see, there is, there is a kind of attitude, behavior, that you automatically de uh, develop it if you are sincerely and truly love in Christ. Sincerely. And to, there are some things when you are truly in love with Christ, you can't do it. You can't even imagine yourself doing it. You can't. You cannot do it. 
Because the love of God constrains you. And because you love God, you love people. That is why the Bible says anyone that says he loves God and hates his brother is what? A, a liar. In other words, you can't hate, you can't love God and hate people. Because when you are looking at people, you are looking at the extension of God. And these are the people Jesus laid his life down for. And you say you love Jesus and you hate the people he died for. That's not possible. You understand? So let us be Christ people. Let us be Christ-minded people. And let us be so winning oriented people. Because that is what pleases God. And as we do it, he that repent receiveth wages. And he that winneth so is wise, and the wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that tell many to righteousness will shine as stars forever and ever. May this be us. May it be our experience in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. And so you watching me. The word of God is come to you. And you have come to understand Jesus is the only Savior, the only one Savior of the world. Apart from Jesus, every other religious leader is a liar. Jesus is the only Savior. He's the only one that died and rose again for you. If it's not Jesus, it's a lie. If it's not Jesus, it's not life. If it's not Jesus, it's not the truth. So you're watching me right now, you want to give your life to Jesus? Just with all your heart, pray this prayer with me. Thank you, Father, today for your word. I believe that Jesus is the only Savior. He died and rose again for me. And I accept that I'm a sinner. Today, I come to you as a sinner. I ask you to forgive me all my sins. And today, with all my heart and with all my mind and my will, I receive Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Most High God as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father, that I'm born again. Thank you that I'm now a member of your kingdom. I receive grace to walk with you to the end. Let everything about me from now on bring glory to my Lord Jesus. Thank you and thank you that I'm saved in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And Father, we thank you for these wonderful, precious ones that you have saved and brought into your kingdom. We celebrate heaven with, over these souls. And we ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, wherever they are, whatever country, whatever state, oh God, we pray that you will plant them under your servants you have raised, that you will use to raise these precious ones up, that at the end of it all, everything about them will bring glory to the name of our Lord Jesus. And we also pray, invoking the blood of Jesus against anything of the enemy that was working against them. Now we are the children of God. The devil is forbidden. By the blood of Jesus, we break the whole of every satanic hand on them. In the name of Jesus, and let Jesus be glorified in their lives. Thank you and thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Amen.